Hello everyone, I am Bradley Sword, Associate Professor of Computer and Information Science at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, Illinois. And this video today is going to take a basic look at inheritance, parenting, polymorphism, virtual functions, all of the cool stuff that we cover at the, the tail end of uh, C++ programming or you know Java programming and then we begin in advanced Java or C++ programming all the uh, object-oriented uh, programming paradigm stuff so I you don't have to start with a basic uh, program running but I'm gonna use the pong game from previously or depending on your pers perspective it's not previous to you at all so just as a quick little review I just have a little pong game that goes that I can just move around with W and S keys and I have some really basic boring horrible AI that is easy to beat pretty easy to beat anyway and so that's the whole point of this is just, I just am using this because I'm gonna create a menu show you how everything works through a menu system um, some of you are already sick of men making menus for me but I think menus are an easy way to test out a lot of the stuff that we, th we work out and so there I win the game and instead of just quitting the game I can go back to the main menu and either win or lose or whatever I can go back to the main menu so I can fix this up near the tail end of everything um, so I don't have anything set up this time for the actual menu system so I'm so this time I can show you how to go ahead and do every little thing so I have my one player room for my for this game that I just created I'm gonna go ahead and create a whole new room and I'm gonna call it main menu room and I'm gonna make it 720p I don't know where this resolution came from 1366 by 768 but I'm doing 720p for everything and so there's my 720p resolution and so I'm gonna have a background image and I'm gonna have two buttons on top and I'm gonna hard code the buttons to start and then I'm gonna show you how to you know once we look at what a button is and just and think of all the core behavior and all the the custom behavior that each button needs we will see how to implement the more complicated uh, paradigms so uh, I'm gonna need a background image so sprite create sprite and I'm just gonna call it main menu back background sprite and it's gonna be 720p so I'm gonna go ahead and resize the canvas and I can do that since I haven't touched anything just yet I haven't changed anything inside of here let's see how do I edit here I go and you can go as crazy as you ever want to be with this thing I'm just gonna create something like this just like it now make it black just to kind of have, maybe it was black a second ago, I didn't pay attention. And then just put some text on here, make it a little bigger. Again, I'm just doing this just to have something for you. Programmer art, as it were, just to have something, a placeholder for later. Uh, there's Pong, you could, I'm not gonna center it, I'm not gonna worry about anything like that. And if you really wanna be cute about it, oh, I could do something like this. And I can create something like this, right? Make it look like it's an actual Pong game or something like that create a little circle object over here you go, oh look at how cute that is there's my pong game there's my menu I am ready to put that thing into the game and so just to kind of get things going here I want to make sure that the one or the main menu room is on top because well <laughs> there's been a major release 2.3 but forever the first room that's listed is the room that starts my game so I, I you know so I'm pretty confident that the main menu room will do that if you have it in reverse make sure if you're using the one player room make sure that the main menu room is at the top and so you could create an object and put this thing in the room but it's really nice that I can go to the background layer inside of my room I can look at all these settings over here there's a lot of cool settings that we hardly ever touch we usually touch the uh, the camera and viewport settings and we hardly ever touch the background layer but I can go ahead and say oh give me that main menu and there you go I don't have to do anything else and now I can run my game and you can see there oops never mind up oh, oh things have changed oh that's interesting oh things have changed that's cool like a little home there's a little home there there we go okay things have changed since in version 2.3 see you learn something every day not like they call me up on the phone and go hey Brad we changed things today so you gotta watch out being on the bleeding edge of things sometimes things change and you don't realize them and they can cause some troubles so that nowadays this little home tells me which room is the first room that runs because a second ago it was not running it was running pong again 
So there it is. There's okay. So there is my there is my main menu sitting here, and right now I don't have anything else going for me. So let's go ahead now and uh, create the buttons. I'm going to go ahead and cre create two buttons. One is going to be play one player game because that's what I already have set up from my previous examples, something to fall back on. And then I, and I'm going to also create a quit game button. So I can just quit from the menu and just quit out and just go back to whatever it is I've been doing on my computer previously. So I'm going to go ahead and create a sprite. I, I'm never good at the sizes because I just do this off the top of my head whenever I'm doing these things. Um, so especially for this kind of stuff, not always, but enough times. So I'm going to say quit game button, or I'm just going to say button. Main menu button sprite. How about that? All right, and for a size, oh goodness, I never. This is this is this is what I'm saying. I never always know. 500, 400 by 100. Let's see, what does that look like? Yeah, that looks like yeah, that looks pretty good. You know, again, your my you know, your mileage may vary. You pick whatever you think will fit for you. I think that's a pretty decent size for what we're trying to accomplish. And I'm just going to keep it simple. And again, remember, I'm going to do a mouse mouse over and a mouse not over state. If you know, if you don't, if you know me from previous videos, you know I'm famous for just for doing that kind of stuff, just to show you guys how to make this thing these things work. And for this, I'm just going to go ahead and create like a little border, a white border, and I'm going to use a black background. And then what I'm going to do is co come back to my main menu button sprite. I'm going to duplicate this, create a second sprite. This will be my, the first one. You know, image zero will be my off state. My mouse not over, and then I'll just reverse the colors here. If I, you know, for this, and I'll just turn this into. Oops, I'm doing it all wrong here. There we go. So it's so like that. Watch your eyes if you need to. I'm gonna play. I guess I can play this. Watch your eyes if you need to. And there you go. That's off and on. And if you know me from other things, we'll be able to control this, so it will never flicker. It will never, ever, ever, ever flicker. So the last thing I want to do is make sure when I go to draw whatever my text is, it's going to be on top because I'm not going to bake the text in. Like I, I might do that for introductory, you know, drag and drop level stuff as you're getting used to just programming. But as we get to be more advanced programmers, we definitely want to do as little work as possible to get our job done, right? That's what. Uh, that's why we automate everything. That's why humans have been spending so much time and effort writing computer programs for the last 50 years since we have the tech. So I'm going to middle center this thing so I can draw the text and the text will always be centered as long as I uh, write the right code for it. Okay, from a graphical standpoint, that's all we're going to need. We have the two buttons. And again, this is if you've already seen this, you've already seen it, it's no big deal. So let's just create a button. Let's just go into objects over here and let us create a quit game button. Okay, it's going to use that sprite. Okay, and I'm going to pop it in the room. And again, just to show you for right now, oops, I'm in the wrong uh, layer. Make sure you go back to instances layer. All these layers, it's pretty cool how these things work. There's two different layers, two different ways that uh, Game Maker goes ahead to try to order which objects and which uh, graphics get put on the screen in which order. And so, the background layer, of course, is the background, and then instances always get drawn on top of it. And if you're, if you, you know, get more advanced with it, you can create many layers so that you don't have to sort things uh, in a certain way. But coming back now, I can put the quit game button in. And now one of the problems is like this: How do I know if this is centered? We've deal, dealt with this before. If I take my grid and I make it 640, now I know that when I move this thing, hello, there we go. That it horizontally at least it'll always be centered because it's half of the width settings and this thing's already centered. So this thing is definitely centered. Um, and if I run this again, watch your eyes as I'm doing this. Watch out, there you go. It's centered in the room and there is my button and we're kind of ready to, to kind of get going with that. And just for the moment, let's not worry about the text right just yet. Let's just worry about the behaviors of this button so that we can I, I, I kind of already got a little tiny bit of a headache just watching that. Okay, so what I want to do on create, the easiest way is just to say image speed equals zero. And the, then the immediateness of this is that 
thank goodness, this, like I was saying, this thing does not work like this anymore. It does not flicker for us. And so mouse enter event. I want to change so I can say very specifically, show me the ind image index one, which is the on state right up here, right? And when I leave, duplicate for mouse leave, image index should be zero, put it back to its off state. So just on and off, you know, if, if, however you want to think of it is a Boolean thing. Uh-oh, what did I do wrong? Hold on, let me say mouse enter, image index equals one, mouse leave, image index equals zero. Interesting, not doing what I thought it would for the first time ever. So let's take a look to see what's going wrong. Game Maker, there's a, <laughs> see you fix all sorts of things up in, in any software product and you introduce new bugs. So this is, I'm gonna push this onto the Yo-Yo Games people for sure. There's a little tiny bug that they need to fix here because it's like, why is this working? And I run my game and I put in, all I did was go ahead and put in a draw event so I could kind of debug this thing while it's running. And I say draw self and draw text on top so I can at least see what's going on with, I can see the number of what the image index is. And you can see I mouse over, no matter where I go, the image index is zero. And you're like, this is very, very confusing. And like up till version 2.3, I never ever had to think about this. And this is becoming more of a thing I see students producing work with this problem, but it's not necessarily their fault, your, our fault, but we do have to fix it because until they fix it on the bug side, we have to make it work. So what's happening here is it's in the sprite, in the main menu button sprite. The collision mask has been, is just one pixel up here at the top. So I think technically, can I make this work if I go very close to the, I, not so far I can't even, it won't even let me do it. Nope, can't even, can't even, can't even. So I have to fix, fix this up by just using full image, manual, oops, I guess I have to do manual. Full image won't even do it. And fix these numbers up manually. Because if this thing is 400 wide, then this goes from zero to 399. And if this thing is 100 high, then it goes from zero to 99. And now you can see that this changed over here. Now the bounding box is completely different than the nothing it was a second ago. And now, there we go. And you can't see the one, of course, because if it's just white on white, you can't see that. So now, <laughs> well, but it's like, if I, you know, problems come up all the time. My goodness, right? Any game, any software product comes up with bugs all the time. So, but this one is kind of hitting hard for me because I've never had, to, it's never had to think about this in 15 years. Okay, so now, now that I'm happy with the quit game button, I can go ahead and I'm going to keep the draw for now just because, you know, we're going to have to go ahead and, and create text for this. So where would I go ahead and create a variable? Since I'm not baking the image, you know, the text into the actual images, because I want to make this as easy as possible, this is where I can go ahead and create something and, and just create a variable on my own and say text and then just say quit game. Something like this. You don't have to use all caps, you can use whatever you want. And whenever I do stuff like this, whenever I'm programming like this, I like to leave notes for whoever else, even myself. Like you can touch this stuff and then in the past to be like, leave this alone. And basically, unless you know what you're doing, don't touch this. These are the settings that you can play with and these are the settings you can't. And so now that I have this variable called text that's sitting under here for the quit game button, now I can go ahead and draw, and, oops, instead of drawing out just, you know, just drawing out an image number, now I can draw the text on top of the image. And there you go, at least it's a first step, there's my quit game. So now white and black, like what is a color that maybe blue will work on that? I could do a draw set color. Again, this is an introduction, so I'm not going to go into all the bells and whistles. I have other videos that can show you how to take this to its logical extreme. Let's see, maybe, I'll uh, see, I just a contrast, it's just a contrast thing. Maybe orange. I'm going to give up after a little bit. I mean, it's not the biggest deal in the world. Yeah, this is, orange will work for us. Okay, and then you can see there's my, my quit game. How about a font for that? How about we create another, here's my Pong score font. Well, how about I create a font, where are you, there you are, for main menu font, main menu button font. 
and I can go ahead and pick one. I'm just going to randomly pick one at this point. Oh, how beautiful. Sure. Uh, size 40. Sure, whatever. Okay. And so now I have main menu button font. I'm going to copy it so I don't have to type it out every time. And now I can go back into my quick game button and say, okay, draw color, draw font, draw set font. And then put that font in. And now everything will be a little better there. There's my quick game. There you go. And now you notice it's not centered. I mean, it, it's starting from the center point, but it's not center centered. So then I can, I can do two more things here. Draw H align. Uh, oops, draw, oops, is it not draw H align? Draw set H align. And then it is, uh, what, uh, what do I want to do? I want to do FA, I think it's middle or center. I don't think it matters if, if it matters but it doesn't necessarily matter which one's middle, which one's center. I would bet with that this is center and then this is middle. I, they get you to the same place. And now you can see, oh, how beautiful now, right? There's my quit game button. And no matter, oh, look at that. Oh, nice, right? So it looks, actually, I picked a decent font, actually, for that. The, the Q looks weird, but that's okay. So then on, off, on, off, on, off. And now the only thing left is, what do I do? Mouse enter, mouse leave, create and draw. What do I do if I press the left mouse button? And in this case, it's a game end. And there. And so I can click, click, click anywhere over here. But once I'm inside of here and I click, the game's over because that's what happens if the mouse is inside the bounds and I click. And so for all intents and purposes, if you want to think about this, the quit game button is done. Right? I mean, it, it has a mouse over, it has a mouse leave, it draws text, it draws the button in the correct state, and then when I click on it, it does some custom behavior. And so now there's a, there, you know, at least right now, all I have left to do for the moment is one other button. But again, talking in gen generalities, like I don't ever want to have to write more code than I need to. And so this create event, quick game, image speed, like other than the fact that the text needs to change, this doesn't change, the image speed doesn't change, this doesn't need to change, right, because it's draw self, change color, change font, and then draw whatever text is, so the, the draw event never ha is never going to have to be modified. Left pressed, yeah, that one will need to be modified because every button has a different behavior when you use the left press event, but mouse enter, mouse leave, those are the same as well. And so just for the moment here, what I can do is start working this out and going, okay, instead of creating a quit game button, well, I like to call them base classes. I'm going to just call this button base class. This is going to be the parent. This is going, every button has base behavior, which is very similar to what you see. And so right now, if all I did was change the name, nothing would occur, right? Nothing would be any different here, right? Boom, boom, boom. That's all good and fine and dandy. But like I was saying here, the create event, yeah, I'm going to have to override this part, but not this part. This image speed can stay the same. And I'm going to leave the draw alone, and I'm going to leave the mouse enter, mouse leave alone. So it's only the create event in one place, and only the left pressed event that's going to be different. And so what I can actually do here is, um, if I want to, just to show you here, I'm going to show you how to do parenting. This is now the, I'm going to call this the parent, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to leave this in, and instead of quit game, I'm going to put this in as error. Just in case, so if something goes wrong, it'll draw out error in the button instead of drawing out the text that you expect. And I'm actually going to go ahead, since this is simple enough, I'm going to go ahead and put in here just a comment override your buttons as you need so the base behavior for a base class is going to be to do nothing because we don't know what a button is supposed to do because every button can do very different things some buttons you know obviously quit the game some buttons go to different menus some buttons you know, or like buy something or some, you know, you name it, right? Buttons do a whole ton of different things. And so like I, you can touch this stuff. I can override the button so I can override this text here. Okay, so let's see. So, okay, so we have everything. I've changed everything here. And I'm going to go ahead into the main menu room and delete this button because we never generally create the button base class itself. But now we're ready. If I do this, say create object. Oops, over here. 
create object. I'm going to call it uh, quit game button. And I'm going to give it the same sprite as the other stuff because the one thing that will be that you can change amongst buttons. Another thing that we thought about is you can change the the sprite. You don't have to have just this black and white sprite. You can customize it however you see fit by changing the sprite underneath, and it'll do exactly like I expect it to. But now here, parenting. If I let's say if I put this thing in the room by itself, where's my main menu room? And I just put my quit game button in here like I did before. Now it's back, watch your eyes again. Now it's back to everything it was prior because it's using that sprite, but there's no code associated with it to tell it what to do because it's just empty and blank. But if I go ahead and say, hey, my parent is the button base class. See all this cool stuff that just popped in? If I run this, all of that stuff comes for free and there's my error. All everything else comes for free. Clicking doesn't do anything because we erase that opportunity, but it does it would go into that event. And so cool. We have everything and now we have to take this and that's the whole point of uh, inheritance and parenting is you create a base class that has the behavior that's common to everything that's going to be used. In this case for a button, everything that's common, we've already gone ahead and created. And now it's just a matter of going ahead and fixing things up. So using this quit game button, you can see here I have left pressed. I can go into it and see it. I can't edit it, but I can right click here and I can say override. Because that's what I want to do. What the base behavior, it was great for, for getting started, but now, I want to put my game end in here. And now you can see over here, the gray stuff is parent, the parent code, the white stuff is mine. And that's where I, over, I overrode the event, and now it will listen to this instead of the parent. And so the, we'll fix the text in a second, but you see, here we go, I click and the game ends because it actually goes in here because this button has this code to handle what happens when I press. Isn't that really cool? That's pretty darn slick. And so now the last thing I need to do is uh, inherit, or say, I guess what, however I want to do this, I want to override. And so now this will be interesting. You can see this. If you're just like, okay, text equals quit game, right? That's what we had before, a second ago. And we're overriding like we did before, right? So what happens? Watch your eyes again. Just tell you right now. Look at that, it's flashing, but it's showing everything, right? And I can click and quit, right? And that's because, because I overrode the create event, the parent never gets called, right? Everything that I had, it, let's see, can, am I allowed to look at it? Show parent event, there we go. All of this code goes away and is, it's as if it never existed. And now I can go into my code and say, I don't know where the breakpoint came from, sorry about that. And I can, I can override, but that image speed equals zero did not come along for the ride obviously, right, because it's flickering like crazy. And so what I can do here, and we do this a lot, especially in parenting, we, we, you know, in constructors and whatnot, I can say event inherited. And what this does is it will call the parent event and do all the work inside of the parent. So it will set the text to error, and then it will set the image speed to zero, and that's what it does. It calls this function, and then it comes back, and then it'll do this where it overrides the error code inside of the text variable and replaces it with quit game. And now the speed was set and there I go. Everything I need is right there. My quit game, I can I, I mouse over, I click, and that's all I need to do. I parent the quit game button, I take over the create event, and rewrite the text. Like I said, that's the only thing we needed to play with. We want to leave everything else alone. And then what happens in the left pressed is what happens in the left press. We end the game. And so that is the, the basics. So let me show you pretty cool stuff here. Let me show you how to really quickly then do the other button and then we're done. I'm going to create an object. You can never, brand new to me. I got to find where these things are. Okay, I'm going to call it one player button and I'm going to use the same uh, main menu sprite, main menu button sprite, cool cool cool. I'm gonna parent it to the button base class so I get all this cool stuff for free. I'm going to override the create event. 
I'm going to call the inherited event inherited. I am then going to set my text to one player game. I don't, maybe the font will be too big, but that's okay. We'll see when we do this. Let's try it out. Oh, I got to put it in the room first. Let's just do all, I get ahead of myself because it's this, this is the fun stuff here. And then left pressed, I'm going to override. And instead of room uh, game end, I'm going to say room go to. And I'm going to say go to the uh, uh, one player room. Oops, I don't have it in the room, right? That's, that's always the number one thing. Why isn't it working? Because you didn't put it in the room. Because you got ahead of yourself. And I do, it, I do it just as much as anybody else. So now I can drag my one player button and put it in here. I'll, I'll bring the quit game down a little bit. Because the uh, homework assignment for my students is to create the two player mode. Okay, up oh, one player game. Yep, it, it's just slightly too big. So maybe if we want to, we can go back to the font here real quick and just bring my font size down a little bit. 40 looked cool. There we go. This isn't so bad, right? One player game, two player game, or, and then quick game. And so I run this. I wish it would remember to bring this so I don't have to do this every time. So there, I quickly showed that quick game works, and one player game takes me to the game. That's pretty cool. And so now, and then the only thing left for me to do is to find a way to exit back. And so I would have to go back and fix up the code. And I will do that, but for those of you who aren't necessarily following along with that, you can quit here in a couple seconds. But that is the basics of just getting parenting working, getting inheritance, virtual functions, polymorphism, all those really cool, powerful uh, topics of object-oriented programming. So create event. Left left pressed event, at least in this case that, and then and then to change the sprite. If I had a different sprite, I could go ahead and change it, and the you know the behavior is never going to change as well. So there's my one player button class. There's my quit game button class. I'm going to bring this. See if I can bring this up a little. So oops, so I can. Oop, it won't let me do it like it used to. Great. How do I do it? I don't know how to. Oh well. Maybe it's in alphabetical order now these days. Maybe I can change that. I'm not going to play with all this stuff right now. Things have changed enough. Alphabetical order is not something I would want when it comes to sorting. I want to sort them how I want to sort them inside of these things. But anyway, but that's it for this, this part of the menu system, just getting any menu system, getting any parenting going. And so if you're good, you can quit now. Thanks for sticking along. But if not, here, just stick along with me and I'll show you how to incorporate all of what we've just done here into the main game that I've just created here. So I can say, so right now, I, there's no way out of the game. And so what I would want to do here in the ball is I can take an escape key, key pressed, others, escape. And I can say, just like I did before, I could do a room go to. And I can say room go to, and I can go to main menu room. OK, and then so just to show that this is working, then I go ahead, I go in here, I go in here, play in my game inside the ball. I just hit escape at any time, and it brings me back to the main menu. Escape no longer works. <laughs> that's not a real ball, right? That's just that's a picture of a ball, not a ball. And now I can quit the game through that way. And so let me just copy this so I can have this as a, as a memory here, or at least let me copy the line of code. Because the other thing I want to be able to do is when the game is over, when the ball is outside the room, remember I used to, you know, for those of you who followed along here, I have room restart and game end. Just replace that with go to menu when the game is over. And we're done. We really are done. So there we go. One player game, escape back. One player game. I'll let them win. It's easiest just to let the computer win. And there you go. You lost. Back to the main menu, and everybody's happy. And so the only thing I can think of is on that draw event for the ball here. Let me look at the draw event. Draw GUI here. H align. Yeah, I don't have a set V align here for this. I have H align. I'm just fixing up, and that you're going to see this all the time. You, you, you make mistakes. The logic worked perfectly while I was while I made the game the first time around, but now that I've changed other things with the game, it affected the 
Um, oh shoot, it's not really affecting that. I thought it really would affect the way that, I thought this thing was drawn a little lower down on the screen, but maybe it wasn't. My recollection of it is a little different. So maybe I need to worry about the, maybe I need to put a little, a little bit on the, the Y value so it's not just hugging the top of the screen. There you go, it's down a little bit more. All right, and now I think we have a complete working game. Those of you who are gonna have a homework assignment, you have everything you need to complete. Now you just gotta create the two player mode. And, um, but everyone else, you have a full understanding of the basics of uh, object oriented programming and all the cool bells and whistles, all the reasons we go through all the hassles to make this thing work. So um, if you have any questions, as always, swordb at cod.edu is a great way to get a hold of me. Otherwise, comment down below. I usually see the comments. I don't always respond to the comments, and uh, but I'll get back to you as soon as I can if you have any questions related to this. So cool. Next uh, next videos are coming up. Uh, depending, you know, right now this is September 2020. I'm going to be making a whole ton of videos for my drag and drop game maker class and my coding GML coding game maker class. So this is going to be a great three month period for you guys to learn a whole lot of stuff. And I really want to know what, got, what kind of stuff you would want to learn so I can make more videos and just keep going and up my subscriber count and just become, become like everybody else and just have millions of subscribers. Nah, it's not a big deal. If I, well, it'd be nice if I had that. But uh, this is just, I just consider this part of my job. And if I make this for my students, why can't I help people out all over the world? So thank you everybody for sticking with me as always. We'll see you around. See you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.